I'm very delighted to see you all here. And what I would like to do is take you on a little journey tonight into the future textiles and materials trends. So engineering fashion, what does that mean? So I make it quite simple. It, for me, it means making new things and bringing in new materials. So I chose four major trends. So I'm thinking about sustainability, circular economy, biofashion, biosynthetics, wearable technology, and 3D printing. One of my favorite companies right now is Recover, a Spanish company that upcycles discarded cotton garments and turns it into fibers, yarns, and textiles. Isaac Nicholson from S3D Studios here is with us tonight, and he, he will talk about it a little bit later. And he is the representative in the US for Recover. But nevertheless, I would like to show you a little video. As you can tell, some major brands are already involved in using this yarn. 
So Bionic Yarn is a company that makes or does similar things. They recycle ocean waste or ocean plastics. And here we see a jacket designed by Pharrell Williams. And it's made from 45% ocean waste and 55% cotton. So, and Pharrell Williams is uh, the creative director now of G Star Raw. So, this jacket is a collaboration between G Star Raw and Bionic Yarn and Pharrell Williams. Bionic Yarn also has collaborated with HM with the Conscious Collection. And let's see what they do. We are completely surrounded by water. And water is the lifeblood of this planet. Every year, a massive amount of plastic ends up in our oceans. In an effort to help solve this problem, G-Star Raw Denim, Bionic, and the Vortex Project joined forces to create the world's first denim collection ever made from ocean plastic raw for the oceans. Vortex retrieves the plastic from the oceans, from which Bionic makes the yarn. To turn this yarn into denim, we needed to revise our entire manufacturing process, involving everyone in the supply chain, from our mills, to the fabric specialists, and the designers. Together with Bionic's creative director, Pharrell Williams, we designed the collection. For our campaign, we created a character called Otto, which was integrated into the design of the collection. And brought to life in an animation. Dear human beings, we vacation by the oceans. We bathe in the oceans. We eat from the oceans. But very few of us think of the oceans beyond what we want from it. The oceans need us now. It's filling up with plastic and ruining the neighborhood. G-Star and Bionic Yarn want you to come together for Big Blue and wear the responsibility for the oceans. Happy life, happy human beings, and happy oceans. During New York Fashion Week, we launched our campaign joined by international press and a network of ocean specialists. I see this eclectic group of people as a paradigm, if you like, for a new blue future. If we do what we're supposed to do, then the entire world can be happy. So thank you. Within a few days, our message spread across the globe. This is not just a drop in the ocean. G-Star truly hopes we will inspire others to wear the responsibility for the oceans. OK. Now, fabrics and garments left for, uh, made from leftovers. So we see now garments, fabrics made from orange, fibers, milk, corn, coffee grounds, coconut, mushrooms, pineapple, and cork. I don't know if you have heard about it before, but for example, here, uh, Italian company Orange Fiber makes fabric from the waste of citrus fruit peels, which is processed with a patented method to extract the cellulose from the fruit. And high fashion brand Salvatore Ferragamo is one of the first brands who uses this citrus fabric. Probably you have heard about Pinatex, a company that uh, makes sustainable, a sustainable alternative to leather made of, of uh, the pineapple waste uh, of plant leaves. Here we see a messenger bag. I brought some materials later on. If you come and see me, I have here. I brought a pineapple leather bag if you want to touch and feel it later. So, and here we see Livia Firth in a Pinatex dress at the Met Gala a couple of weeks ago. Cork wool or cork shell is made from cork granulates that is a byproduct of the production of wine corks. And it is added to the wool and gives the wool a higher thermal insulation 
than normal or functional uh, other functional fabrics. And mushroom or mushroom leather. So companies such as Microworks or Muskin have created leather alternatives made from mycelium and other agricultural byproducts. Here we see a bag which is blended with mushroom, so they take the caps of the mushroom and linen and hemp to make it more durable. I brought a piece of mushroom leather as well, so if you're interested, interested in touching it later, I can show you some samples. Here, transparent leather. It's called Apparition, and it was developed by Dutch designer Sruli Recht for company Echo. And after a three-year period of studying ancient Egyptian and Greek uh, tanning te techniques, you probably have seen or heard about biofashion. Some of you may not. So this, these are garments have been grown in the lab from bacteria, yeast, cellulosic uh, bacteria, sugar yeast, and tea, or even uh, red wine, so fermented red wine. And the project is called BioCouture, spearheaded by Susan Lee in London, and who is also now the creative director of company Modern Meadow, that is in the middle of growing the first leather jacket in the lab without having killed a single animal. It's called uh, biofabrication. And bioprinting, all these bio things here. <clears throat> On the left side, we see a Petri dish, which is filled with pigments of bacteria that can be found in herbs, such as tarragon, oregano, and sage. On the right side, a piece of silk that was dyed in this Petri dish, with these pigments. So as we all know, the dyeing process is, very, is a very big issue in the fashion industry because it's toxic as hell. And biosynthetics, uh, biosynthetic fibers are defined as man-made fibers synthesized from natural polymers. So fibers produced from corn, soybean, milk and seafood. And here we see an Adidas uh, shoe, a prototype uh, that Adidas has created from synthetic biopolymers called biosteel that resembles spider silk. And it's nature-based and completely biodegradable. So they claim that the upper sole will uh, decompose within 36 hours after uh, put in contact with a proteinase enzyme. So that's quite something. Within 36 hours, usually a plastic shoe sits on lintels for 600 years or more. Wearable technology, we all know what that is, right? So maybe everybody is wearing a, a wrist or an Apple Watch, or here we see <laughs> Uh, the Chanel collection, spring, summer, 17. They were walking around as robots. I like it. And here, <laughs> <laughs> and here we see the IBM Watson Marquisa cognitive dress that lights up and changes colors, right, through different emotions. And we have Sabri Sansa here, Sabri, who is the creator of this dress, a consultant for IBM Watson. And this dress was uh, shown at the Met Gala last year. So Nsabri will be on the panel after my presentation. Company Cute Circuit has created uh, this interface. They create LED garments and interface designs that it's called the Twitter dress or Twitter skirt, which was, which was designed 2014 for Katy Perry and Nicole Skirtsinger. So can, you can leave your tweets on the skirt. The same company has created just recently the graphene dress. The dress has a graphene enhanced stretch sensor that captures the breathing of the wearer. 
So it's made with LEDs that change the color when the wearer takes a breath. So the LEDs are placed on a transparent graphene element so it looks like the LED is floating. So I don't know if you know graphene is one million times thinner than paper. It's almost uh, two-dimensional. And this amazing headpiece is created by Lauren Bauker and it has um, Swarovski crystals on top of it that were grown in the lab and treated with a special ink uh, that changes colors uh, through energy loss of the brain. So in the morning, the, the front is more orange and in the evening, it turns more blue in the back. So that is quite amazing. Conductive yarns, here we see Ralph Lauren smart shirt that monitors your heart rate, breathing, and movement activities. It is knitted with a biosensing silver fiber that uh, is uh, antibacterial, so kills bacteria, and also acts as a conduit between your body and your device. So it sends all the information to your phone. So make sure that you work out the next time. So, and Google Jacquard, Google, I don't know if you have heard about this, Google has teamed up with Levi's and now after two years they hopefully finally will release a commuter jacket, so which is woven with a conductive yarn. And let's take a look what the jacket does, or will do. Last not least, of course, 3D printing. 3D printing is proving to offer sustainable and innovative alternatives in the textile materials, interiors, and fashion industries. Here we see a headpiece created by MIEO. And then we have here Julia Kerner, who is with us tonight here. I don't see you, Julia, where are you? Um, Julia is an award-winning designer and architect and lecturer at UCLA. She has worked with famous haute couture houses in Paris and is, has created wonderful pieces for her own line, JK Design. So this is one of her piece. Here is another amazing dress in collaboration with Iris van Herpen, famous Dutch uh, haute couture designer. And here another one in collaboration with Materialize. So, what do all these things that I just showed you have in common? So they reflect our vastly changing lifestyles. However, many things that have been hyped are crashing and burning. But I'm nevertheless, I'm very excited to see where the journey will take us. I think a completely new approach and expertise is required. So the, to engineer fashion, the tech and fashion world need to reconsider their beliefs. Tools, materials, and processes uh, and manufacturing are changing. So collaborations with other industries are inevitable. New job descriptions such as materials alchemist, synthetic biologist, or design futurist will be necessary to move forward. 
fashion designers need to explore electronics, software, buy-in engineering, and an entirely new retail world. So we are looking right now at a major technological revolution. So can the fashion industry rise to the challenge and push forward techno uh, wearable technology? And can the tech world embrace the aesthetic sensib sensibility of the fashion industry in a creative eye-catching way? I'm going to leave you with these questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>